जय राधा माधव कुंज विहारी जय गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरीवरधारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीर वनचारी जय राधा माधव कुंज विहारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय कृष्णा रुक्मिणी जय सत्याभामा कृष्णा रुक्मिणी जय सत्याभामा जय कृष्णा बलराम जय कृष्णा बलराम कृष्णा बलराम जय कृष्णा बलराम जय गौरनिताय जय गौरनिताय गौरनिताय जय गौरनिताय जय जय प्रभुपाद 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 जय जय प्रभुपाद जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमम सपरिवर जगाचार्य अष्टोत्तर षट श्री श्रीमद डिवाइन ग्रेस ऐसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शील प्रभुपाद की जय इस्कॉन संस्थापक आचार्य जगत गुरु से उर्द होल वर्ल्ड शील प्रभुपाद की जय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो टू चैप्टर वन टेक्स्ट नंबर फिफ्टीन अंत काले पुरुष अंत काले तो पुरुष आगते गत साध्वस आगते गत साध्वस छिंद्यासंगशस्त्रेण 
छिंद्याद संगशस्त्रेन स्प्रहाम देहे अनु ये च तम स्प्रहाम देहे नु ये च तम अंतकाले तु पुरुषा आगते गतसाद्वसहा चिंद्याद संगशस्त्रेन स्प्रहाम देहे नु ये च तम अंतकाले तु पुरुषा आगते गतसाद्वसहा चिंद्याद संगशस्त्रेना स्प्रहाम देहे नु ये च तम अंतकाले तु पुरुषा आगते गतसाद्वसहा चिंद्याद संगशस्त्रेना स्प्रहाम देहे नु ये च तम अंतकाले तु पुरुषा आगते गतसाद्वसहा चिंद्याद संगशस्त्रेना स्प्रहाम देहे नु ये च तम अंतकाले at the last stage of life to but purushaha a person agate having arrived gatasadvasaha without any fear of death chindyad must cut off asanga non attachment shastrena by the weapon of spraham all desires dehe in the matter of material tabernacle anu pertaining ye all that cha also tam them translation and purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupad translation at the last stage of one's life one should be bold enough not to be afraid of death but one must cut off all attachment to the material body and everything pertaining to it and all desires thereof purport by shila prabhupad the foolishness of the gross materialism is that people think of making a permanent settlement in this world although it is a settled fact that one has to give up everything here that has been created by valuable human energy great statesmen scientists philosophers etc who are foolish without any information of the spirit soul think that this life of a few years only is all in all and that there is nothing more after death this poor fund of knowledge even in the so called learned circles of the world is killing the vitality of human energy and the awful result is being keenly felt and yet the foolish materialistic men do not care about what is going to happen in the next life the preliminary instruction in the bhagavad gita is that one should know that the identity of the individual living entity is not lost even after the end of this present body which is nothing but an outward dress only as one changes an old garment so the individual living being also changes his body and this change of body is called death death is therefore a process of changing the body at the end of the duration of the present life an intelligent person must be prepared for this and must try to have the best type of body in the next life the best type of body is a spiritual body which is obtained by those who go back to the kingdom of god or enter the realm of brahman in the second chapter of this canto this matter will be broadly discussed but as far as the change of body is concerned one must prepare now for the next life foolish people attach more importance to the present temporary life and thus the foolish leaders make appeals to the body and bodily relations the bodily relations extend not only to this body but also to the family members wife children society country and so many other things which end at the end of life after death one forgets everything about the present bodily relations we have little experience of this at night when we go to sleep 
while sleeping we forget everything about this body and bodily relations although this forgetfulness is a temporary situation only for a few hours death is nothing but sleeping for a few months in order to develop another term of bodily encagement which we are awarded by the law of nature according to our aspiration therefore one has to change the aspiration during the course of this present body and for this there is a need of training in the current duration of human life this training can begin at any stage of life or even a few seconds before death but the usual procedure is for one to get the training from very early life from the stage of brahmacharya and gradually progress to the grahastha vanaprastha and sanyasa orders of life the institution which gives such training is called varnashrama dharma or the system of sanatana dharma the best procedure for making the human life perfect one is therefore required to give up the attachment to family or social or political life just at the age of 50 years if not earlier and the training in the vanaprastha and sanyasa ashramas is given for preparation of the next life foolish materialists in the garb of leaders of the people in general stick to family affairs without attempting to cut off relations with them and thus they become victims of nature's law and get gross bodies again according to their work such foolish leaders may have some respect from the people at the end of life but that does not mean that such leaders will be immune to the natural laws under which everyone is tightly bound by the hands and feet the best thing therefore is that everyone voluntarily give up family relations by transferring the attachment from family society country and everything thereof to the devotional service of the lord it is stated herein that one should give up all desires of family attachment one must have a chance for better desires otherwise there is no chance of giving up such morbid desires desire is the concord concomitant factor of the living entity the living entity is eternal and therefore his desires which are natural for a living being are also eternal one cannot therefore stop desiring but the subject matter for desires can be changed so one must develop the desires for returning home back to godhead and automatically the desires for material gain material honor and material popularity will diminish in proportion to the development of devotional service a living being is meant for service activities and his desires are centered around such a service attitude beginning from the top executive head of the state down to the insignificant pauper in the street all are rendering some sort of service to others the perfection of such a service attitude is only attained simply by transferring the desire of service from matter to spirit or from satan to god please repeat this translation at the end at the last stage of one's life one should be bold enough not to be afraid of death but one must cut off all attachment to the material body and everything pertaining to it and all desires thereof om agyana timirandasya gyana jana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha nama om vishnu padaya krishna prashtaya bhutale shrimate bhakti vedanta swamini tinamine namaste saraswate deve gauravani pracharine nirvishesh shunyavadi paschat desh tarane jay shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadara shri vasadi gaurabhakta vrinda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare antakale tu purusha agate gata sadvasaha chindyada sanga shastrena spriham dehe nu ye chatam so shrimad bhagavatam is continuing in its instructions and here in this verse it is said that one must cut off all attachment to the material body everything pertaining to it and all desires thereof so the root cause of all the problems that the current world current society current civilization is facing is desire to enjoy 
in a sinful way. In this material world, the desire to enjoy has always existed since the beginning of creation, whether it is Satya Yuga or Treta Yuga or Dwapara Yuga or even the previous uh, thousands for thousands of years, always the characteristic feature of this material world is that everybody desires to enjoy this world to the best of their capacity. Animals also desire, but animals do not have uh, higher intelligence by which they can enjoy in a very sophisticated way. Their intelligence is very limited, but human beings have got well-developed intelligence. And by using this well-developed intelligence, human beings always desire to maximize their enjoyment in this world. This is the common denominator among people of all civilizations, all religions, all nationalities, whoever they may be, the common denominator, the common factor in this material world is everybody desires to enjoy. In Kali Yuga, what happens is uh, this desire to enjoy uh, takes the form of unrestricted enjoyment, enjoy in a sinful way. In the previous yugas also people would enjoy, but they would enjoy with regulation. So, religion uh, generally, religion plays this role of regulating the enjoying tendency of the people. For example, person wants to eat, people like to eat, they eat and enjoy, everybody likes to eat and enjoy. In Kali Yuga, that eating tendency becomes unrestricted way, I will eat anything and everything I want. There is no consideration of this can be eaten or this cannot be eaten, this is Kali Yuga. Formerly also, people used to eat and enjoy, but there was regulation. These things can be consumed, these things cannot be consumed. Whereas in Kali Yuga what happens is, people don't care for any rules, people don't care for any regulations, people don't care for religious principles, and everybody wants to enjoy in an unrestricted way, in a sinful way. So because of this uh, tendency to enjoy in an unrestricted and sinful way, so many problems occur in the society. The reaction to this uh, desire to enjoy in an unrestricted way comes back uh, to individuals and to the collective society and to the entire nation and to the entire world in the form of diseases, in the form of wars, in the form of accidents, in the form of some pandemic, so many reactions. So all these reactions and all these different uh, problems which, are seeing in, which we are seeing in this current world is because of this desire to uh, enjoy in an unrestricted way. Because the subtle invisible law of action and reaction, technically called law of karma, is operating in this world. So if people enjoy in an unrestricted way, then people will have to suffer. But uh, nevertheless, in any case, even if people don't enjoy in an unrestricted way, the tendency to enjoy this material world, enjoy, uh, is always there inside everybody. So religious principles generally uh, try to uh, play the role, religious principles play the role of regulating the enjoyment of the people. You can enjoy, but you can enjoy within this boundary. You cannot cross this boundary. So that is how religious principles have always played the role. But nevertheless, the desire to enjoy is always there. And the tendency to uh, disregard religious principles and enjoy in an unrestricted way is always there in the material world. So on one hand, religious principles may be imposed, people may be told that you can enjoy, but within this boundary, do not cross this boundary. If you cross this boundary, this is papa karma, this is sinful activity, reaction will come. And out of fear of uh, facing those reactions, people may uh, be restricted, people may restrict themselves, but the tendency to disregard that uh, religious principles and do whatever we want and enjoy in an unrestricted way is always there in this material. So the root cause is the desire to enjoy. So uh, that is a very realistic problem. Nobody can give up their desire to enjoy, no matter how much uh, philosophy or Vedanta, one may hear that I am not this body, I am spirit soul, uh, I will have to accept another body. This is all part of Vedanta philosophy. 
no matter how much philosophical instruction a person may hear, a person is helpless when it comes to the desire to enjoy. It is a reality. Arjuna asks in the Bhagavad Gita, Atha kena prayuktoyam papam charati purushaha annichan apivarshne baladiva niyojitaha. Arjuna asks Krishna, why does a man commit sin even though he knows that it is, you know, sinful activity? Balad, as if he is pushed by force, baladiva niyojitaha. So, why does a man commit like that? So, Krishna replies, Kama yesha krodha yesha rajoguna samudbhavaha. So, it is the force of passion, it is the force of lust. Uh, it simply pushes a person. So, the fact is that everybody in this material world is strongly driven by the desire to enjoy. And everybody is helpless. Everybody is helpless. Nobody has any, uh, nobody has power to restrict themselves. Even great tapasvis, great rishis, like Vishwamitra Muni, Prabhupada gives the example, very great rishi, he performed tapasya for 10,000 years, you know, very great yogi. But when he was performing this tapasya, Indra became very scared, that why is this Vishwamitra Muni performing such rigorous tapasya? Maybe he wants to occupy my position. So, he sent uh, Menaka, Please go and disturb his tapasya. And um, Vishwamitra Muni's uh, uh, tapasya was duly disturbed. So Prabhupada gives the example, even powerful yogis in the past, they were all not ordinary people. They had the capacity to undergo and tolerate severe pain. In the scorching sun, they could surround themselves with fire on all four sides. And in the biting cold, they could take a dip early in the morning in cold water. So they had this much power to, capacity to withstand uh, so much of physical pain. But even such rishis, even such powerful yogis, uh, they are also helpless when the, when the desire to enjoy comes. So everybody in this material world is driven by that. And because a person is driven by this strong desire of enjoyment, uh, this philosophical instruction that we are not this body, we are spirit soul, we have to accept another body and the process of accepting another body is very painful, there is death, there is old age, there is disease, we have to suffer again. All this doesn't make sense to a person who is strongly desirous of material enjoyment. It makes no sense to him. He doesn't have a taste to hear all these things because what will this philosophy give me? It is only going to stop my enjoyment. So something which is going to stop my enjoyment, something which is not going, something is taking away my enjoyment, why shall I take it very seriously? And Prabhupada says in one place, the conditioned soul becomes tired of such sense gratification. But even though he becomes tired, he is forced to continue the same enjoyment. So person is trying to enjoy, he is not getting any satisfaction, he has become frustrated with this enjoyment, but there is no other alternative, he has no other hope, he continues to do the same thing again and again. So this is how the material energy of the Lord forces everyone to run behind enjoyment and even though a person may be frustrated, he has no other hope. Just like a, an animal uh, which runs behind water in the desert, in the desert it appears as if there is water from a distance so the animal sees, oh, there is water, it is scorching uh, sun, it's very hot. So the animal runs behind that, thinking that there is water, when it comes there, actually there is no water. So the nature of the material enjoyment in this world is also like that. The hope is created by the material energy that this, if I get, I can real, real get, I can get real enjoyment. And person actually approaches that, he's actually cheated. So the person remains dissatisfied. And because of this, so much suffering one has to undergo. And Kali Yuga, what happens? Uh, this tendency to enjoy takes an unrestricted route. People start enjoying in a sinful way. Particularly in four sinful ways, uh, people start enjoying the material world in Kali Yuga. Dhyutam panam striyasuna yatra papas chaturvida. Srimad Bhagavatam says. Meat eating, intoxication, 
illicit relationships and gambling. So these four ways uh, people start enjoying in Kali Yuga. Desire to enjoy is always there. In Kali Yuga it takes the form of these four ways. Dhyutam Banam Striya Suna Yatra Papas Chaturvida. So this being the situation of Kali Yuga is very difficult for Shri Shri. Shri Krishna Rukmini Satya Bhama Ki, Shri Shri Krishna Balaram Ki, Shri Shri Gaur Nithai Ki, Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada Ki. So this being the situation in Kali Yuga, it's very difficult for people to even consider higher things about liberation, about finer things, about philosophy. It's very difficult for people because the desire to enjoy is constantly pushing everyone to run behind sense objects. So this is the current situation of the world. So therefore, uh, Prabhupada in the purport, he, he writes, the uh, solution for this is uh, that desire has to be changed. Change of desire is the solution to this problem. As Prabhupada writes in the purport, uh, one cannot therefore stop desiring. It's not possible to anybody to stop desiring. Desire is the concomitant factor of the living entity, Srila Prabhupada writes. But the subject matter for desires can be changed. So the solution is, everybody, if people want peace, prosperity and happiness, individually, collectively, nationally, internationally, uh, universally, then the solution is, one has to change one's desires. One must have a chance for better desires, is Prabhupada's statement. Otherwise, there is no chance of giving up such morbid desires. So, desires are there. Everybody has got desire to enjoy the body and different things connected to the body. And as long as one becomes addicted to such enjoyment, neither there is real satisfaction nor one uh, considers the uh, consequences of such enjoyment. Srila Prabhupada was preaching in Philippines, uh, Krishna conscious philosophy. Uh, there he came across a student and the stu Prabhupada was uh, presenting that if you enjoy in a sinful way, in the next life you may have to take the body of a dog and you may have to suffer like this Prabhupada was giving a lecture. So one student got up and said, so what if I become a dog, I can enjoy in an unrestricted way. So Prabhupada said, just see. How a person has become mad after material enjoyment, he doesn't consider, he thinks taking the body of a dog is another kind of enjoyment. All the Shastras are giving a warning that if a person enjoys in an unrestricted way, he may have to take the body of a dog or a cat or a buffalo, but the desire to enjoy has blinded a person so much that he thinks, if I get the body of a dog, it is so nice, I can enjoy in an unrestricted way. Nobody will come and give me any lecture. Nobody can come and pose any restrictions on me. So, this much, the desire to enjoy maddens a person. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it is mentioned, Noonam Pramatta Kurute. Pramatta means madness. Yad Indriya Preeti Rapnoti. Indriya Preeti refers to material enjoyment. So, a living entity becomes maddened after material enjoyment and because of that, he actually suffers and he cannot appreciate that he is suffering. So the solution, as given by Srila Prabhupada in the purport is, one must have a chance for better desires, otherwise there is no chance of giving up such morbid desires. The Prabhupada's famous example, a child is eating mud. If the mother uh, goes and gives some nice sandesh or rasagulla, the child stops eating mud. So that uh, chance for developing better desires is available by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Sankirtana movement by participating wholeheartedly in the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So even though a person may not be philosophically inclined, he may be very much addicted to material enjoyment, he may not have any interest in knowing about body, soul, next life, papa karma, punya karma. He just wants to enjoy in an unrestricted way. If the person is fortunate enough to come in touch with this Sankirtana movement and he accepts the Sankirtana movement, the principle of chanting Hare Krishna mantra, then that is path of auspiciousness is opened for him. So practically speaking, nobody has any solution to the problem of desiring. Everybody desires keep popping up one after another, one after another, one after another. 
and uh, attempt to fulfill those desires does not yield and give rise to real happiness and satisfaction. And in this way, a person suffers. And although he suffers, he has no other option. He has to continue to do whatever he is doing. So the only hope is this Sankirtana movement. So Sankirtana, particularly the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare, automatically engages and gives a person some higher taste. So a person becomes ad attached to Sankirtana movement, he accepts the principles of Sankirtana because of this higher engagement, by sincere engagement in Sankirtana movement, slowly a person's desires can be changed. So what can actually change the desire of a person is actually this Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Chanting and hearing of this Hare Krishna Mahamantra in the association of devotees can actually change the desires which are popping up from the heart of a person. And so powerful is this Sankirtana movement, so powerful is the chanting and hearing of Hare Krishna Mahamantra that anybody who sincerely accepts these principles, gradually his desires are changed. The sinful desires which are existing in the consciousness of a person, the Supreme Lord who has incarnated of the holy name, actually destroys all these desires. And higher desires are awakened. Positive spiritual desires are awakened. So what is that positive spiritual desire? That is the desire of rendering service to the Supreme Lord. So the desire to render service to the Supreme Lord Krishna is actually created by the effect of the holy name. The Prabhupada says, living being is meant for service activities and his desires are centered around such a service attitude. Beginning from the top executive head of the state down to the insignificant pauper in the street, all are rendering some sort of service to others. The perfection of such a service attitude is only attained by transferring the desire of service from matter to spirit or from Satan to God. In the introduction to Bhagavad Gita also, Srila Prabhupada uh, writes very nicely uh, uh, just to point out how uh, the tendency to render service to others is there in everybody in this world. Prabhupada writes, when Sanatana Goswami asked Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu about the Swarupa of every living being, Lord Chaitanya replied that the Swarupa or constitutional position of the living being is rendering service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then further Prabhupada writes that if we analyze this statement of Lord Chaitanya, we can easily see that every living being is constantly engaged in rendering service to another living being. So Prabhupada says everybody is already engaged in service. By doing so, the living entity enjoys life, you see. How everybody wants to enjoy life? Actually, by serving others. And then, further Prabhupada goes on to elaborate. The lower animals serve human beings as servants serve their master. A serves B master, B serves C master, C serves D master and so on. Under these circumstances, we can see one friend serves another friend, mother serves the son, wife serves the husband, husband serves the wife and so on. In this way, we go on searching in this spirit, we will be see, it will be seen. There is no exception in the society of living beings to the activity of service. Everybody is rendering service to others. And then Prabhupada writes, the politician presents his manifesto for the public to convince them of his capacity for service. So election time, we are seeing all politicians. Everybody is coming up with their manifesto. Please vote for us. The other political party has cheated you, last 10 years they have not done anything. Please vote for us, we will satisfy you, I will render good service. The other party says, no, 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 never make the mistake of giving your vote to this party. If they come to power, you are finished. We will serve you better. And then third political party comes and says, all those, those two political parties, they are all thieves. We are the genuine people, we will render service to you. So such a nice statement, whatever Prabhupada says is so practically we are able to see. The politician presents his manifesto for the public to convince them of his capacity of service. I can render service to all of you very nicely, please vote for me. The voters therefore give the politician their valuable votes, thinking he will render valuable service to the society. 
the shopkeeper serves the customer artisan serves the capitalist capitalist serves the family family serves the state in terms of the eternal capacity of the eternal living being so propada writes in this way we can see no living being exempt from rendering service to other living beings therefore we can safely conclude service is the constant companion of the living being and rendering of service is the eternal religion of the living being so uh, this is a position so therefore if the attitude of service has to be changed from matter to spirit or from satan to god propada writes for that the most uh, wonderful process is the process of sankirtana so the chanting and hearing of hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare actually will destroy the desire for material enjoyment and inculcate this desire of serving tendency so anybody who starts chanting hare krishna maha mantra sincerely and participating in sankirtana he will ta- start taking pleasure in rendering service to the supreme lord the famous verse of the bhagavad gita bhoktaram yagna tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram prabhupad uh, uh, presented this very nicely that krishna is the enjoyer do not run behind your enjoyment try to give enjoyment to krishna so that desire to render service to krishna the desire to develop a service attitude for the enjoyment of krishna is created by this sankirtana movement so therefore chaitanya mahaprabhu's process of sankirtana chanting of hare krishna maha mantra is the most wonderful process in this yuga for everybody to change their desire unless somebody wholeheartedly participates in sankirtana there is no possibility of changing one's desire and if one's desires are not changed then what will happen the result will be either a person may enjoy in a pious way or he may enjoy in a sinful way both people will be dissatisfied the pious person may not have so much sinful reactions but still the dissatisfaction will be there and the pious person also slowly a time may come when he will also start enjoying in a sinful way this is especially applicable to india because at least in our country due to the influence of culture people are uh, trained not to perform sinful activities meat eating propat says meat eating intoxication illicit connection with women and gambling these things were unknown to indians before the britishers came they were unknown very 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 rare that means even 200 years ago kali yuga has been there for last 5000 years but even 100 years back 150 years back in our country propat says these things were unknown respectable people in the society they would never consume flesh propat gives the example if some very aristocratic person he wants to consume meat uh, what he used to do he used to call his uh, person who drives the uh, horse carriage and he used to tell him secretly please cook in the place where the horses are staying and night without anyone's knowledge he will go have some flesh and come back <laughs> we were very scared <laughs> society <laughs> that much people had fear this is 100 years back in our country but by 2024 we have seen all those restrictions are thrown to the dogs so these four activities are glorified <laughs> these four activities are most glorified big big industries big big corporations they run based on this so uh, the even pious people this is very applicable to india india people are generally pious and they don't uh, indulge in these four sinful activities even now in india in so many places you go people don't indulge in these four activities but the influence of kali yuga is such that all their piety go is thrown to the winds and people become addicted to sinful enjoyment also so therefore uh, the only hope for everybody in kali yuga is to whole heartedly participate in chaitanya mahaprabhu sankirtana movement chanting of hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 and chaitanya mahaprabhu's mercy is unlimited uh, the more a person is fallen the more chaitanya mahaprabhu's mercy falls on him there is an interesting incident in the western countries how this demonstrate this um, it so happened that uh, uh, there was uh, some kind of a, uh, a gathering was there where uh, in an auditorium and they were giving away prizes for uh, who has sold the maximum number of flesh 
right, amount of flesh. It was a company which was selling beef and you have sales targets in the company. So person who is the best performer, he is called onto the stage and then he is given some kind of a prize. Then everybody claps that saying, well done, you have met your targets, next year you should sell more beef. So that kind of one, uh, in an auditorium this was going on. And a couple of kilometers away, there were devotees who were doing Sankirtana in the western countries. And generally when Sankirtana happens, police chase the devotees and they say, you cannot do in this park, go away from this place and all those things. And one devotee was carrying one box of prashadam. It was not known, but it was a box of prashadam. And suddenly the police started coming and saying, disrupting and all these things. And the police suspected that something, you know, unlawful is there here. So they started chasing this devotee. And this devotee started running. My God, police is chasing me with that box of prasadam. Running, 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 he suddenly entered this auditorium, straight came to the stage, and just at the time when that prize is about to be given, uh, for the person who was the best performer for beef sales. And uh, this devotee came, he put it in that person's hand and ran away through the other side. And everybody clapped for receiving the prasad. So the person who was supposed to receive uh, some kind of a gift for uh, having met the sales targets of beef actually received a box of prasadam by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> So this was, uh, uh, this incident was recorded in one of the book distribution stories. So how this devotee writes that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy is such that the person who is most fallen <laughs> is getting a prize for maximizing the beef sales and instead of getting sinful reactions, he is receiving uh, Krishna's prasadam which he never imagined. So that is the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the more the living entities become fallen, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy also falls upon them. So anybody who accepts Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, worship uh, very sincerely and process, they are all saved from this ill effects of Kali Yuga and they achieve the highest destination. Uh, Mukta Sangha Param Rajet, Bhagavatam says. Free from all these uh, sinful uh, tendencies, Mukta Sangha and Param Rajet, love of Krishna is attainable to all this. So this is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and Srila Prabhupada is presenting us with uh, uh, all this process of Krishna consciousness. So if you wholeheartedly accept this, we will definitely be benefited. So, Granthara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Jagadguru Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Nitai Gurpalim.